Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the MSI. This is their MPG A850 GS PCIe 5 power supply. MSI did send me the sample, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. Tons and tons and tons of certifications and specs on this power supply. It's 80 plus gold certified. More info on the side. Then on the back, we have some quick product specs as well as our tech specs and a breakout of all the included cables. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have some product literature followed by our bag of cables. And lastly, the power supply itself. Let's take a look at the cables and the PSU in more detail. Here are all the cables. First, we have our main power cable right here that plugs into the power supply and your wall outlet. Next, we have our hardware kit with our four included screws. Moving along, we have one PCIe cable followed by another PCIe cable that is split on this end. And then we have our 12 volt high power cable adapter on the other end. So we have a hybrid between the two. And then we have your 12 volt high power to high power, both 600 watt cables. They have the yellow end, which I really like and wish all brands did this. So you can tell when it's fully seated and plugged into your GPU. But there's the difference here. One ends that. The other end is going to be what you see right there for the PCIe version. We have a Molex cable, two SATA cables here. We have our ATX cable and two CPU cables that are clearly labeled for us. You can see the CPU labeling right there. Looking at the power supply, we'll start with the tech spec sticker. You can see those specs right there directly on the unit. Let me give you that side profile too. MPG, MSI Performance Gaming with the Dragon logo on this side, MPG on the other side. Let's look at the back side next. We have a sticker that we can remove. The sticker basically says under zero fan mode, the fan stops operation at low loading. So you can enable or disable that right there on the back. On, pressed in is off, back out, on, in is off. And then we have our on and off switch right there in the power plug. Speaking of fans, here's a look at the fan right there with our nice venting MSI Dragon logo on it. MPG right there, pretty sleek. And last but not least, here's a look at all the connection options we have with this power supply. Everything is clearly labeled and easily identifiable for us to make sure we get exactly what we need and where it's at. Before going any further, let's address a common question that we get. A lot of times you'll ask, will this work with my GPU and CPU? So I went ahead, I threw together a chart that shows you the NVIDIA GPUs and the recommended wattage that they need. And we did the same thing for some popular AMD GPUs as well. Keep in mind, this is just for your GPU, so it'd be best to add an extra 100 or 150 watts for your CPU, depending on if you're using like an entry-level or mid-range CPU, or if you're using a top-of-the-line flagship CPU. But anyways, here's a look at NVIDIA GPUs first. From 550 watts all the way up to 1,000 watts, you should be able to find your model anywhere from the 3050 up to the 5090. And moving along to the AMD GPU side of things, 650 watts all the way up to 850 watts. And same thing, don't forget to add in an extra 100 to 150 watts for your CPU, whether that's Intel or AMD. Before installing it in our test bench, I thought we'd go ahead and run a quick test here. Blue is what we wanna see as we go through each of the different connection types. So we'll fire it up. You'll notice the fan spinning. And blue is great here for our ATX cable, 4.9 to 5, 12 to 12, 3.2 to 3.3, uh, 11.9 to 12, 5 to 5, and a 213 millisecond score. We want that PG score to be between 100 and 500. So no issues there. PCI, great, 11.8 to 12. Our CPU, 11.9 to 12. And our SATA right here, 5 to 5, 11.9 to 12. 
and 3.2 to 3.3. So everything's blue, that's what we wanna see. That means it's working properly as it should right out of the box. So if this is your first time building a PC and you're installing the power supply, let me walk you through the bigger picture here and what you'll have to do and then it'll vary a little bit depending on extra parts and components you may or may not be using in your build. At a bare minimum, you will be connecting the ATX cable to your motherboard. That's gonna be this guy. We also will be connecting either one or two CPU cables to your motherboard. That'll be these two that we have connected in. So ATX is connected, the uh, CPU cables are connected, and then lastly, our GPU. So we're bringing the board power, we're bringing the CPU power, and we're bringing our GPU power right here. So at a minimum, you'll be connecting those and maybe adding other ones depending on any additional parts or components depending on if you're adding like 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives, any sort of like fan hubs or adapters or things like that that you might be using. And then your mileage will vary depending on your GPU if you're using the latest and greatest, basically um, NVIDIA's 3000, 4000, and 5000 series GPUs will be able to use this connector. Maybe you have an adapter to this, that sort of thing, but that is what you can expect when you install your power supply. Here's your close-up of everything installed. We have our GPU cable connected. Again, with that yellow coating, we know that it's fully plugged in properly. If not, you would see yellow here. So I love that feature so much. There's your ATX cable plugged in and our two CPU cables plugged in as well. And at the power source, I put a meter on it so we could see what the power supply is consuming. 63 watts right now, give or take a little bit. Then we have 123 volts. 0.52 amps and our low is 1.7 watts and our high is 206 watts so far with just the initial boot up but again everything right now is just powered on with our test bench and at idle let's talk about zero fan mode again so currently we have zero fan mode enabled which is why the power supplies fan is not spinning even though everything's on and running if we want it to start spinning we just press the button in so that turns zero fan mode off so hopefully that makes sense it is now off and it's spinning even though we're not under any sort of heavy load. But we can press the button again, it comes back out again. It's as far out as possible here. And it enables zero fan mode. So it will now only spin once this is under very heavy loads. Moving on to our stress test. So we've been having this power supply running at a full load for our CPU and GPU, both maxed out at 100%. Over half an hour, no hiccups or issues to report back. Let's take a look at it in real time. 1.3 volts for the CPU, 376 watts. The CPU is the Intel 13900K, and our GPU is our RTX 3080, coming in right now at 319 watts and 100% utilization right there. So the power supply is running very smoothly, and it's very, very quiet. I hear a smidge, just a little bit, not really fan noise, maybe a, a little whine but that's literally because my ear is right to it. I hear these fans and this pump. I don't hear anything from the power supply except when I go that close to it. Here's some of the internal whining and I don't think it's even the fan bearing or anything like that. So very quiet overall too. If you have fans like we have here, pump and like that, you'll be more inclined to hear that than anything from this power supply. Perfect time to get the FLIR camera out. Let's start with the GPU connector there. 140-ish degrees Fahrenheit, getting close to 150 on that cable, not bad. ATX coming in at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking at our two CPU cables, 90 to 100, and a little bit hotter, closer to 110 on the other side. And then take a look at the hotspot just for fun. I like to show this, close to 200 degrees depending on where we go on the heat sink there. On the motherboard itself. So nice and toasty there, but the cable's looking good. And we got to look at the power supply unit itself. We'll start with the top. Typically we might see some heat build up around the fan bearing. And then in there, some of the internals are getting warmer. We can see those hot spots shining through. Cable connections looking good here. ATX. CPU, and then GPU up there. There's your side view, warmer at the bottom where some of the heat's building up, lying flat on the surface here. 
And then probably our hottest spot on the power supply through the mesh here, we can see some of those internals really lighting up. 150 degrees Fahrenheit, I think we peaked at there, give or take a little. Back at the source meter now with our CPU and GPU being stressed, currently showing 885 watts, give or take a couple there. We'll cycle through 119.7 volts, 7.4 amps, low is still 1.7, the high is now 887. And we're back to what we're currently getting right there, 889, 892. You get the idea. So far, so good with this power supply. I expect it to last for years, if not decades to come, thanks to its 10 year warranty. So you can buy this power supply with confidence, knowing you're getting the latest and greatest tech backed by an incredible warranty.